Hey Tubies, it's Psychic Bob. Yay, well welcome to Wednesday. It's Wiccan Wednesday here at Spirit Channel and I'm so glad you guys are here. i uh, got to give a big shout out and say first of all, thank you to all of you who came up to yesterday's video. We had such a good time. We had messages from the spirit world. And if you didn't see that video, definitely check it out. It's in the queue right before this one. I did little private psychic readings, uh, mini readings for people who wrote into the show. So if you want to get in on that next week, See yesterday's video explains how to get your letter in, okay? Anyways, I'm so glad you're here. Well, I've been sitting here and cutting some cord because I got something really cool to show you today. Um, I just got a new pendant. In fact, I'm gonna put on the cord here and I'll show this to you. I got a pendant of Lord Surya. As many of you know, I am a worshiper of Lord Surya. He's one of my gods. And uh, he's the sun god, and he comes out of India. But actually, he's more than Indian. He's really all over the globe. But uh, anyways, here's my new pendant. Uh, by the way, you saw this pendant before. This is my other Lord Surya pendant. This is my big one made of brass, which I really love. But <laughs> it's really heavy. And I thought, I like this on special occasions, but I don't want to wear it all the time. So I got a new one. Look at this little one. It's done in sterling silver, and it's hand-painted. It's from India. It's Lord Surya. There he is. And you see him in the middle? The sun god. Isn't that cool? There you go. So anyways, I'm just putting on a cord here. I bunch of, bought a bunch of uh, you know, jewelry cord. In India, Lord Surya is the sun god. Now, what's really cool is that in most of the Western world, we no longer have sun god worship, at least among the general populace. Um, but in India, they still have temples, active working temples, where people worship the sun god. And what's really interesting is that Lord Surya, Surya is from the, the root word sur, which means sun. And in the English or the ancient Roman, Times they used to have the sun god, they called him Sol, S-O-L. So solar, that's where we get that word. So Sol and Sir, very similar. And it's believed that the same sun lord was worshipped around the world at one point. So what's really cool is as a Wiccan, you know, many Wiccans worship the concept of the goddess as the moon and the god as the sun. So the sun god really is old Sol or if you want to go to India, Surya. And I love the fact that Surya is still worshiped today. And here's my pendant, isn't he just cool? So today I'm stringing up my pendant here and I thought we'd do a little ritual offering at my Surya shrine to dedicate this pendant. You know, it's kind of traditional in Wicca that when you wear jewelry that you bless it first, that you consecrate it uh, to the, the aspect of deity that you're working with. Now, you know what's really interesting is I have recently, I'm not going to put this on yet because it's not consecrated, but we'll do that in a minute. Anyways, this one is an older one that is consecrated, so I'll wear that for right now. My Lord's son, Lord Surya pendant. Um, but anyways, fascinating thing about the sun god is people may say to me, well, Psyche Bob, which aspect of the god do I worship? One book says that God is the sun god. Another book said he's the green man. And another book I read said worship the god as the horned lord. Some of you guys say, I'm confused. I don't know which aspect of God. Is one better than the other? Is one right? Is one wrong? You know, this is where I love Hinduism. Um, for many of you may know, I spent a lot of years studying at Hindu temples before I became a Wiccan. And in the Hindu concept, they believe that the divine, the imminent, the all-pervasive spirit of Brahman, the God, or in spiritualism we call infinite intelligence, manifests through all the gods. So this also is very much common in Wiccan belief. So the sun god is one form of the god. The sun god brings life into the earth and he manifests in a vegetative form, in a plant form. Plant life is associated with the God. This is then the green man aspect. And as society evolved and people started to embrace more 
agricultural and animal-based cultures, he also became the Horned Lord. Now, in the early days, the Horned Lord was the, the one that was hunted, the stag in the woods. And later, he became the cow and the goat in European agrarian society. So God, or the God, is aspected in all of the forms. In any form that you choose, whether you worship the Sun Lord, whether you worship the Green Man, whether you worship you know, the Horn Lord, it's all really the same God. And what's interesting is I was reading in one of my Hindu books that this same concept exists in the East. So if you're like somebody saying, well, you know, say, Bob, I've looked at the Western gods. I'm trying to work with, you know, my pantheon and my magical sources. You might want to consider if you're not feeling connected to the Western societies to go to the East. Again, in the East, we have Lord Surya and he's still actively worshiped. And so you can buy things related to him and wear them and have him close to you. This is the solar aspect in the Eastern tradition. The Horned Lord also exists in Hinduism as Lord Ganesh. Notice how he has his tusks. This makes him the form of the Horned Lord, another form of God, the God, masculine divine force. And so the God can take form. So he can be the Horned Lord, he can be the Sun Lord, he can be the Vegetative Lord. Um, there's an aspect of Lord Ganesh where he's, his deity form is made out of leaves. And so Lord Ganesh also aspects the green man. I find it fascinating how all the cultures have all of this together, you see. So I, I want to share this with you because I know a lot of people are confused as to how to relate to the God. Now, you know, a lot of people say, well, I thought Wicca was worship of the goddess. Yes, it is. The goddess is also the maiden, the mother, the crone. She has a triple aspect, as does the Horn Lord. So really in traditional Wicca, we worship the goddess and the god. But today we're going to just talk about the god, and particularly one of my favorite forms of the god, which is the Sun Lord. As many of you know, when I go out vlogging and I go outside, by the way, I'm still working on getting a camera. We will get outside soon. Um... You know, I always stop and I reverence the Sun Lord. Many of you watch my vlogs, you remember that. That's because I really feel that there is a Sun God. And so when I wear my Sun God pendants, I'm really connecting to that energy. So anyways, I thought today we would just go to my Sun Lord shrine and do a little dedication of my new pendant for Lord Surya. So come on along. Well, Tubies, here I am at my Lord Surya altar. Um, I wish I had my other camera because I could move around. It's hard for me right now to move my laptop and film, but hopefully you can see this. This is the main deity form that I have of Lord Surya. Lord Surya can be depicted in two forms. He can be as a person, which is anthropomorphic, meaning looking like a human body, or he can be depicted in his abstract solar disk form. This is the form in which I have him. And as I showed you on my pendant, in both of these pendants, that's the form of Lord Surya that I like. And actually, in the West, most of us think of the sun god in this form. So he's relatable in the East and the West in this form. Uh, on my altar, I have some beautiful candles down here. Uh, it's traditional for Lord Surya worship to put out candles in red. I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is in a beautiful red glass. It looks orange on camera, but it doesn't matter because red or orange or gold are colors associated. Here's a golden lamp that I have. So I've got three lamps along here, uh, a gold one, a red one, then another gold one. Oh, over in the corner is Lord Pan. Um, I just put him there for now. Sometimes Pan is also associated with the sun god, so it's okay to have him on your altar. Or, as we said earlier, Lord Ganesh as well. So whether you're doing an eastern altar or western altar, these are other aspects of the god that you can employ, such as Pan or Lord Ganesh. Now, over here, I also have another form 
of the sun god. This is kind of my ceremonial staff. And sometimes when I do invocations to the sun lord, I like to use this image. Isn't this beautiful? You guys can see we've got some glare here. But this uh, face is done in glass. It's beautiful gold and orange sort of glass. And it's set in this beautiful frame with the solar rays. And sometimes I will hold that and invoke the Sun Lord. So, you know, when we talk about your Sun Lord worship, you can get as creative as you want. There's no one way you have to do this. But this is my altar to the Sun God. And here's my ceremonial staff. So, I'll put them over there for now. So anyways, we're going to just do a simple offering to the Sun Lord for a blessing of this pendant. So I would look here and I would say, Great Sun Lord, Majestic One, we thank you for your rays of light, your rays that bring warmth and healing and blessing to the earth. In honor of you, my Lord, I offer this pendant for wearing that will connect me to you. May, your, may you, Lord, shine your rays of illumination upon it. And may your power now bless and consecrate this metal. I touch it to your Lord's holy rays, your Lordship's rays, that I may receive your blessing. And your blessing, Lord, we ask to descend upon this pendant. And with the sign of the Wicca, the pentacle, we say, Here this pentacle I lay for blessing and protection of Lord Surya by night, by day. So mote it be. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing. So mote it be. <laughs> And you see, it can be that simple. Now, if I wanted to get really fancy, I could have brought all the holy water and all the incense. Today, I wanted to keep this very brief and simple. And so what's important is that when you consecrate an item, especially if you want to do sun lord worship, that you do it from the heart. The good Lord of the sun blesses all of us. And, you know, as I said, in India, there are many, many millions of Hindus who still daily go to the temple of the sun god and offer prayers. And so I think that we too in the West should revive the worship of the sun god. There are many pagans and Wiccans who do in the, you know, the Western world, Europe and the United States and Australia and Canada, North America and South America, do honor the sun god. But it's not as heard of in the West as it is in the East. So I feel that having a, a beautiful shrine to the sun god is really important. And so he is one of my deities. Now, I'm not saying you have to worship him. It's the only form. As I said, there are many forms of the god. But if you're seeking to find a form of the god, uh, and maybe you haven't found one yet, you might want to consider worshiping Lord Surya. He brings a lot of blessings to my life and a lot of power. And so now I have my new pendant, and I'm very blessed. Hail the Sun Lord. Hail the Sun Lord. Hail Lord Surya. Hail Lord Soul. Hail God of Light. So mote it be. So mote it be. <laughs> Now, if we wanted to do further worship of Lord Surya, um, there's a traditional Hindu way to do it, uh, which I thought I'd show you today. It's called Arti. Arti is when you make offerings to your, your god. So, um, generally you offer Arti in 3, 5, 7, 9, or 15 items, odd numbers. It's just the tradition. Don't ask me why. That's just how I learned it. So today we're going to offer do three offerings to Lord Surya. Uh, the first thing we're going to offer is water. It's traditional in India, believe it or not, to offer water 
to the sun god. So here is our chalice. You'll notice that it's in orange. Orange is a traditional color in India used to worship Lord Surya. So you can have orange items, red or gold. But I happen to have an orange chalice. We're also going to offer incense today. Okay, so that's a traditional offering. And then the main uh, part of RT is offering a flame. So I have a candle lit in this beautiful red glass holder. And we're going to offer that. So the way you generally start with RT is you ring a bell. And that's a sign that worship is beginning. Now, before we even do that, it's best just to settle down and meditate. So let's chant some mantras. Let's chant the mantra of Lord Surya. And the mantra is Om Surya Namaha. Om Surya Namaha. Om Surya Namaha. Om Surya Namaha. Then we can begin our ringing of our bell. And we'll offer our water first. In the Hindu tradition, you offer water in a circular pattern clockwise. Om Surya Namaha Om Surya Namaha Om Surya Namaha Now after the water is offered, it's considered consecrated. And you generally sprinkle it on yourself, and if other people are present, you sprinkle it on them. And you also anoint your forehead with it. So now the water is consecrated. It's called Prashad of Lord Surya. Now we're going to offer incense. Again, going in a clockwise motion while chanting mantras. Om Surya Namaha. Om Surya Namaha Om Surya Namaha Om Surya Namaha And then you take the incense and if people are at the puja or arti you let them bless they bless themselves with the incense so let the smoke waft onto you and this also brings a blessing Now we'll offer our flame. Om Surya Namaha. 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 And now our flame is consecrated. And what you do is you take your hand, you hold it over the heat. Now don't burn yourself. And then you touch your third eye, meaning spiritual light illumines you. And touch your physical eyes that you will see and be blessed and see with spirit's eyes as well. And you would pass this around the the people that were gathering with you, if you had other people. And they would put their hands over it and then touch their third eye and their physical eyes. Some people pass the energy around their aura as well. So now our water, our incense, and our flame are consecrated to our Lord, Lord Surya. So this is another way, just one way, it's not the only way, but one way to honor the Sun Lord. And these little simple rituals you can do every day. So anyways, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight about worship of Lord Surya.
Well, guys, I think our consecration went really well. Here again is another shot of my new consecrated Lord Surrey appendant. Anyways, I hope today has brought you some insights of another aspect of the God, another way to consider worship. It's been so great being here with you guys today. And I tell you, I just love the chance to, to share the mysteries of Wicca with you. And, uh, you know, so as I said, if you're searching a God, a way to connect to the divine masculine, explore the sun god. It doesn't matter whether you call him soul or surya. It's really one sun god overall. Guys, well, listen, thank you for being here. Listen, if you get a chance, pop over to my website, www.psychicbob.com. I've got books over there. You can schedule a private reading. I want to say thank you to all of you who've been calling for private readings. We're having such a good time. It's been a real blessing to, to connect with all of you. And I'm looking forward to sitting down with so many of you this week and next week and in the coming weeks. And I'm getting filled up, but uh, we'll still get you on. So give me a call. You can call my office, 703-825-3929 if you want to get on the schedule for a reading. Uh, or you can write to me in my email, readings at Robert dash hickman.com all of those links will be in the info box below this video and if you want to also look for solar jewelry or celestial jewelry you can also pop over to rare she has some beautiful pendants over there as well so definitely you know check out sun lord worship it uh, it'll certainly warm up and light up your life <laughs> well guys thanks for being here you're the best i love you guys Listen, be back here tomorrow. We got a really cool video. We're going to do an unboxing. One of my YouTube friends, Danny Massey, sent me an amazing item that he custom made. And we're going to open that tomorrow and see what he said. So make sure to be here and we're going to have that. You guys are best. I love you. We'll see you tomorrow. And until then, may you all always blessed be.